the rope sometimes. The rope? <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, yeah, fair enough. What? Well, I was going to say, what, um, what made you... Goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> Excited about what I'm going to ask. And, yeah. so, um, what made you sort of think about this topic? Or, I know, uh, like, like, was there something specific, or was it just something that you, know, you, you knew you wanted to talk about? Um, well, that's a good intro, I guess. Uh... I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna like you, go. You work your magic. That's fine. Yeah. No. I mean, that's a good place to start. But at the same time, um, you're the first person other than Laura Lee that's actually been like in a conversation. But I've talked mm -hmm. about you before in more than one video. So, mm. um, we talked about Jordan. This is Jordan, uh, who is a uh, <laughs> founding member of, of Destry, the band that we were in, and uh, his. I don't remember if I've talked about you traveling and stuff, but anyway, in Saskatoon, so the band that I've, the only one I've really ever talked about has been Destrier, so uh, that's how we met, and then, I mean, that was 2012, I think? Yeah, I'm, So I, I love thinking about how I met you, because it was through Kurt, or I don't know if you, I remember. Saying, saying names is whatever, um, yeah. I'm not that, First name I'm, not, I'm not saying Kurt is a bag of shit, but, so I think it's probably fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was a swell guy. Yeah, but um, uh, no, it was it was you in a sweater with the hood up, hunched over a piece of paper. Oh really? Writing stuff down during an open mic. I remember the open. I remember. I just don't yeah. remember what I was wearing. So yeah, <laughs> it was just because you guys were in that project. You were trying to get that off the ground. Well, I wasn't trying to get it off. I was trying to get <laughs> was, out. Yeah, okay. That's why I was there. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, That's why I was there. Oh, I thought. Okay. Well. Okay. He was probably there, like scouting it out the way I was. He was I supporting was in, you. He was like. I, I, I don't, think, oh, I don't we, think I played that night. I was just there what? to like check out acts because that when I started playing in bands I was like I uh, started finding about out about open mics since so I just started going open mic not to play but just to check it out you're saying that I met you once before I saw you and Vanesti play because you must have because I don't think Alex was there okay well what I remember well, maybe you were I don't, maybe maybe that well okay. I don't think I ever went to an open mic with Kurt except for that one because oh. what I remember from my memory but memory is a, f a funny thing sure was that um yeah, so I was in this project with this dude named Kurt, uh, who I just met online, just like, I think it was uh, Saskatchewan Metalhead or whatever uh, group on Facebook. Oh, yeah. I was trying to get into bands, because the one I was in beforehand, Echo Serenity, I kind of left that, and just like, was still itching to, to do stuff with music, and then so I started jamming with these dudes in a church, and um, it was not going in the direction that I wanted it to, or just like, the music wasn't there for me, and like, I wasn't like, it was just to kind of fill time and be like, this will still help me, like, with my skills and abilities and whatever. Mm -hmm. But it was not up to the level of, of, of playing and the style that I was into. But I was just, I was still just practicing with them because I didn't have another band to jam yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. Oh, why not? Yeah. But then Kurt was like, oh, yeah, like, my buddies, they're going to be at, they're going to be doing this open mic or whatever. And he was just saying, like, we should go in. Mm. And then also to scout out us doing an open mic. Sometime like we didn't even well, have a name. Okay. So that was part of it. Yeah, was okay. like because I thought to, he was scouting out to do it. Yeah, but it was also like yeah, let's go support. Like oh, I know okay. this dude. Uh, I didn't. I don't know think he knew Vanesti. He just knew you, right? Yeah, I didn't know it was a two for one, but uh, I think that I think that. But for me, it was like, um, because he he said he wasn't saying it like advertising it as an opportunity, but he was just saying, oh yeah, it was it's just these uh just like right now it's just a guitarist and a drummer they're looking for more people and then this little light bulb uh -huh. went off in my head. And I was like, I'm going to go see what they're doing, because if, if I like it, I'm going to jump ship, <laughs> and I'm going to go try out for, for their project. Because yeah. he said it's only, it's just a duo right now, and they're yeah. looking for other people, maybe. So. That's that's interesting, because we, we tried Kurt out, but I don't remember... Um, I wonder how long ago. Yeah, I don't know if that, like, the, that was the, before or after, because I know we you joined the band in April of 2012. But we were trying Kurt out when it was winter still. Mm. So I don't know if, if you guys coming to check out it was already us having told him that... Because I wonder if he wouldn't have mentioned that he had tried out for us then. No, he didn't. I don't think he mentioned... So maybe this was before. 
but then... Because he, I think that's why he was starting his own thing then. I don't remember, honestly... It couldn't have been more than six months that I was jamming with them, so I think it does fit that it was after probably you tried him out, and then... Okay. It was only, like, at most three months, at most, that I can remember actually okay. going to that church and, like, jamming with them, and it wasn't... I, I think we only had, like, four or five jams there ever. I think that was it before that open mic, and then I was like, uh... I don't remember how I did it, probably really, like, cowardly, where I was like, uh, I, I, I kind of like what they're doing better, and <laughs> see you later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of this topic, your dad was there at that open mic. He was, like, just there. <laughs> you serious? I'm serious. It's, you know what's funny? Uh, I mean, it's not funny, but <laughs> I completely <laughs> blocked that from my memory. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember him being there at all. But now that you say it, I do. Yeah. Like, I forgot that that was... Well, you have a much more... Because you... I don't even... Re- for some reason, like, I usually have a pretty good visual memory. Mm-hmm. I remember mm-hmm. where we were sitting. Yeah. And what you said kind of reminded me that, like, yeah, I was at this one spot, at the like, in the upraised part at the back sitting. Yeah. Um, in, like, the booth or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I completely forgot that he would have been there that night. It was like a three for one for well, no, more like a two for me because I <laughs> yeah, wasn't yeah, scouting yeah. for. Yeah. But but I don't remember that. I didn't remember that at all. Yeah. But I mean, he really likes music and stuff, so I wanted to take him somewhere when I was actually still trying to mm. to like reconnect. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I remember I I just he, he it was just this guy. It was this. This older gentleman who's yeah. very verbose. Yeah. And talked a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you'll have more to say on that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, uh, he certainly said, because, like, here, here he was, and then, I, you know, here you were, kind of more to the side, with your hood up. Yeah. Doing your, you huh. know, letting, letting the muse flow through you. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, that was the very first time I met you. So I met your dad first and like the first and last time I ever saw him. Yeah, that I I completely forgot about that. Um, the title of this video obviously, well, people know what they're watching, but I haven't addressed it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I started thinking like, what's something I can talk about with Jordan? But then also coincidentally, it was like two weeks, three weeks ago, when my dad. I I think I mentioned this in the chat. Where I was like, so my dad showed up on Facebook with his name misspelled, <laughs> and like, <laughs> and said, oh, what was the other thing that was weird? His birthday was wrong, and his name was spelt wrong, and he friended me, and I was like, I didn't know that, like, I, whatever, he's like, he yeah. said his, his account got, uh, oh, it was like misspelled, and it was funny, but I forget. He was trying to say that it got hacked. Oh, sure. But it was You like, could probably pull it up and just put it on the screen or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But basically, he said his account got hacked, so he started this new account, and he added me as a friend again on Facebook. Yeah. So that was kind of, like, recently in my mind, too. And there's and, just, sorry, there's this funny idea where, like, just changing the information slightly and, like, purposefully is, so you know, yeah. like, dupe whoever it was that yeah. hacked the previous account. I don't know. Yeah. Or it's going to change anything. I don't know. It seems like a pointless change. Yeah. Either way. So that was kind of, like, because I hadn't funny. thought about my dad in any context for a while, and then all of a sudden he added me, and he never talked to me again after that day, <laughs> which is par for yeah. the course. Like, yeah, he just, yeah, yeah. he, like, adds me to Facebook, and well, then... when was the last time he did talk to you, or did you... Did before you guys, that day? Yeah, yeah, before that. I don't know. Like, a year? A year and a half, maybe? Oh, I don't know. Okay. Maybe, like, two years? Like, I remember yeah. that when I had uh, moved to Lethbridge, like... Because even right before I moved, I remember he was, like, trying to add me a bunch, and I was like, what the heck? And then I finally, like, was like, hey, fine, here you go, yeah. like, add me to Facebook, and then he, like, never talked to me. Mm. And then shortly after I moved to Lethbridge, I remember where I was when I sent this message, and I was like, what was the point of, why, like, why did you want to add me to Facebook? You never talked to me anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's just a weird, like, uh, just so we can work? S- well, uh, you're sure, or just even just have you have each other in your periphery or more for him to just be like, yeah, there's, there's my son over there. Yeah. He's like, hey, he's, he's there. Yeah. Um, I kind of get it if you want to lurk a little bit. He's, cause he just wants to know what I'm up to. Yeah. However, it doesn't seem like he's on there very much. I actually, he didn't say, is it speaking, this, what is it now? The 28th? 27th? Um, 20, what's, what's Monday, it, 27th. Our magical computers here. Yeah, it's the 27th today, so my birthday was two days ago. Nothing from him. But it was like, 
So yeah. I guess you just haven't been on Facebook since the day you created that new account and added me? And created you 30 years ago? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 30. I'm flattered. <laughs> More than that. Uh, One, two, three. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, that's... Um, uh, I thought you were so just joking around when you said 30, but... No, no, I, well, I knew it was a little more 30, but I didn't, yeah. know, I didn't want to overshoot One, it. One, two, three? <laughs> I, yeah. thought it, I thought it was 31, but... No, 32. 32 most, oh boy. 33. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, um, so that was on my mind a little bit, but I was just thinking, like, what's something, and because we're going to be jamming and stuff, too, actually on the way here I was thinking about that as well, because I'm like, I'm excited to go jam these songs. Yeah. And in the past, it'd been like, like, well, um, and that, I, that's the thing I was going to start on, so I'll get back to that in a second. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I was like, so much like, of myself or in these songs, there's not a lot of social commentary or things that are like, over here, but yeah, a lot yeah. of it's here. Sure. But I was just like, I feel separate, but probably because there's been so much time that's passed since I've written them. Mm -hmm. But back then, too, it was always like, I've got to perform this again, and like, always being in that same exact space. Sure. Um, and because I was thinking about that too, and I was like, oh, we're actually going to find the jam and stuff. Like, maybe we could actually talk about that um, in the context of like starting with that song. Um, yeah. But I feel like, well, I don't know where to start. I almost feel like I need to give context. Sure. So, or not just for that song, but we're going to talk about a song that we wrote together uh, lyrically, and we, we discussed a lot. Um, so, we've had this discussion before about like fatherlessness, what are your experiences, what are my experiences, we, we sat down and talked about it, and then in the context of like, I want to write this song, I had some influence from some other things, and then, um, yeah, so, we, we've, we've talked about it before, and then casually just talked about it too, um, but it kind of, like, that, that was the one of the main things, I was like, we could actually talk about this again, it, like, revisit the topic in this more formal way, I guess, uh, still kind of loose, but my context for like, I guess to start things off proper for like fatherlessness or just like how I, I guess one is just like, what does that mean to me or, or to you? And then, and at the same time, like the context for me feeling like I fit into that label of like fatherlessness or like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so my parents got divorced when I was, uh, like four and then my dad moved to San Francisco. I went to visit him when I was five and I never saw him again until I was 12, I think, and he was living in Toronto. So there was, like, this big gap of time there. In between, there was, like, some contact. But, like, I don't remember. I, I have one memory when I think they were still together, uh, when he was still in Lethbridge anyway. It's a very, very, like, like faded memory. Uh, so I would, have, I would have had to have been about four um, when, yeah. But yeah, there was this huge gap where we didn't, like, see each other in person, and there wasn't enough contact in between to really feel like I was connected that, that much. Yeah. Um, so I saw him for three summers in a row in, in Toronto, and the, then... Sorry, those visits to, to Toronto would almost kind of be like you getting to know him for the first time? Yeah. I wouldn't think you would have known, like, like you said, the very faded memory when you were yeah. four, like, yeah, how much can you know of somebody... Well, when I was five, five, I went to visit him in San Francisco right. for a summer. But again, same thing as, like, I don't remember. I mean, yeah, I have yeah. memories from that trip, but they're not, like, I know who my dad is now. Sure, like, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, so when I was in Toronto, those three summers in a row, like, I had a, a stepmom that I wasn't a fan of. I don't know that. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, he got remarried, and then, so that my, I have two half-sisters, they're both, like, oh, the same yeah, age. yeah, yeah. Yeah. One was born in December. He's still my, my. I usually just say my sister, but my half sister on my mom's side mm -hmm. was born on my dad's uh, birthday, so mm. they share a birthday. And then, oh, like wow. five months later, my other half sister, uh, my dad's side, was born in April. Um, mm. So by the time I went to like Toronto, she was just a little baby or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but then that's the thing. So it was entering this context of like I wasn't just there with my dad. Yeah. I was there with a stepmom that I didn't oh, know and also didn't really like, and then there's like this little baby. Oh, okay. I pictured you just you and your dad. I no. didn't. I didn't know there was well, this is, family. This is why I think I didn't really get to know him that well over the summers either, because he was working full time when I was there. Mm. So it was like Monday to Friday, nine to five. I just kind of, luckily, I was able to just go out and just do whatever I wanted. Yeah. Really, like I didn't have any money to do anything, but I like went to the library or I went to yeah. the mall or I went and played basketball or got into trouble or whatever. Um, 
And then on weekends and evenings, we, like, went and did stuff. Mm -hmm. But it was him just, like, showing... Like, we went... I'm Like, family friends I got to know over the couple of years or whatever. Or, like, we went to, like... On the weekends, we, we went to Niagara Falls one time. Or we went to, like, the Renaissance Fair. Stuff you do with your kid when he's in town kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever's in the area. But I didn't really give... It didn't give... It's not like we just sat and just, like, talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah And, yeah. like, really got to know each other. Yeah. Um... And for a while, I always wanted to go live with him because I just didn't want to be at home. But it wasn't because I'm like, Dad's cooler, because I didn't, had no way of knowing that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got to know in some ways how my mom and dad were pretty opposite, because my dad was very liberal socially. I can just go do whatever, um, for the most part. Mm -hmm. But then he was really strict with school, which always was odd to me, because he wasn't there for my school, but it always told me I could just do better and better. Mm -hmm. and my mom was the exact opposite. Yeah. She was there. Well, like, well, I mean, I lived with her while I was in school. And was way more loose about it, but with social things, it was like, mm. it was hard for me to even sleep over at a friend's house ever, and like, go out and do this or that, or like... Is it a, a religious thing, in a way, or I don't... I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, part, part of it, of maybe, it. but a lot of it was just, I don't know. Just okay. Just, it was more strict with, like, how I behaved socially, and who okay. I got to hang out with. Felt how she felt, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so after that, like, that would have been the last, like... Toronto visit would have been 2001, I think. And then I didn't see him again till I went in my mid-20s to Chile. So it was like, there's like a 10-year gap, and then there's like, or no, five until it was, there was like a seven-year gap or something, and then there's like a 10-year gap again. And then I saw him when I went to Chile, or we went, like the plan was, like he paid for my airfare or whatever. I went there during a Christmas break from university, so I was there for like two and a half weeks, um, and then my, my half sister was there too though. Like, um, so and she would have been like I don't know how old at the time, like a tween. Yeah. Uh, but I felt like again there I didn't really like I got to know a little more also because I was older, and then after that he ended up moving to Saskatoon, which is the thing that you brought up that like I kind of forget that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. He decided he wanted to move here, and I was like. Why? Like, because cause after that visit to Chile, that's when I was really like, yeah, I don't, I just don't, like, it was going to be awkward, and I knew that, but it was just like, why, why, like, like, I got to know that I didn't really like him that much, and there wasn't a connection, like, n yep. one had never been established, so it's not like it got rejuvenated, yeah. it was just like, there was never really much of a connection there, and we didn't build one in those couple weeks, and I never, he's, like, when we're in person, he very much expresses, like, and is affectionate, and like, oh, this is my son, like, I really miss my son. Sure. But I don't, it, it feels awkward to me, it feels kind of just like the same thing with, like, my, well, it's more awkward, but I mean, a lot of my family in Chile, just because of the, the culture there, they've maybe met me twice in my life, and they're just, like, so, like, close, or they feel close to me, and they feel like they have all this love for me, and I'm like, I don't know you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a little different with him, obviously, but I mean, he had all that, like, he wasn't disconnected from me, like, I just didn't feel any connection there, and then, so okay. he decided he wanted to move to Saskatoon, uh, he said to, like, be closer to me, but at, it was also, like, he was getting remarried, like, someone from Mexico, and he was marrying them here in Canada, and I think that played a role. Okay as well, and he was like, well, if I'm going to go back to Canada anywhere, maybe I'll just try out Saskatoon, mm -hmm. give that a shot, mm -hmm. um, and I think also because I was here, he gave, it was an opportunity for me to help him out, in a way, and I was like, that's weird. Didn't he ask you for, like, leads on jobs and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he would like, try to get me to do footwork for him, yeah. and he, I think he borrowed a couple hundred dollars from me once, and it was really awkward, it was mm -hmm. in the very beginning, and I was, like, helping him look for places to live and stuff before he got here, too, yeah. which, I mean, it makes sense. But yeah, at the same you're time, know, but like it's still weird. Uh, kind of, it's weird because I not yeah. I didn't want to do those things. So they're favors for someone that I didn't really like. Sure. But I tried to hang out with him a couple of times and give it a shot. And the more I hung out with him, the more I realized I didn't like him. So, um, I don't know. In the sense of like, for me, I guess that's all the context there. Uh, I mean, the really quick version, mm -hmm. but like the fatherlessness aspect is the fact that like, yeah, he was not there when I was growing up. He wasn't present. He wasn't. Uh, active in any way physically because he wasn't in a, a geometric location or geographical location i mean <laughs> Ge geometric well, location we're inside the same cube and <laughs> yeah exactly he wasn't geographically nearby to, to, to you know 
but then there wasn't like a lot of contact with phone calls and like emails yeah, yeah. and stuff. There was every once in a while, but they were also pretty like surface level. It was like happy yeah. birthday, yeah, Merry sure. Christmas, yeah, yeah, like once in a while ask about school maybe. Yeah, well, he always knew. Uh, he my my mom would like keep updated oh, okay. on my grades. Yeah, and then so he would like give me shit about that. Oh, that's that. why that whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. But, like, there were times where I was even excited to talk to him at the beginning, like, well, not the beginning, but in my, like, tweens and whatever, and then I stopped being excited, too. Yeah. But it also got less and less, because he also had a kid to focus on, like, like right? Yeah. And I've never been, like, resentful for that, because he wasn't there before that, really. Yeah, I wonder if, like, because it was it was so young that your parents divorced, and mine were never together after I was born. So I didn't have that, I didn't know I was what I was missing, and I didn't know what I was losing. I imagine if, if you're like 12 or 13 and your parents get a divorce, I wonder what kind of, what kind of, I guess, damage that creates. Yeah. Because I didn't know, yeah, like I said, I didn't know what I was missing. Um, and I don't mean that in a in a bitter way, it just never occurred to me. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, other other kids have a dad, you know, or a mom and a dad, and I was just like, oh, I live with my mom and my my brother and my sister at the time, and uh, yeah, like any, uh, I I could I could and probably should clarify too, like we, uh, most of my siblings have different fathers, and none of them were ever stayed, or things didn't work out. But, um, so, it's only until recently that my mom has been with somebody kind of long-term, uh, well, no, I shouldn't say that. I mean, she'd been with people, but they they were never that great. The guy she's with now is really good. Um, but for a lot of my youth, there wasn't even really, there wasn't really another man in the house uh, that often. Yeah. And, I mean, that, that's a whole other, that's a whole other bag, but I, I won't go there. But, but no one that was replacing your, there wasn't. That's right, yeah, 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 it wasn't really like, yeah, I, yeah, and, but I didn't really mind, because I didn't know I was supposed to care. Yeah. About that, like, I don't think I saw it as like, well, I mean, I knew other kids who, were from single mother families, and they tend to be single mother families. I don't, I didn't know a lot of kids from with single father yeah. families, or like the when the they live primarily with their dad. Um, so I mean, that whole concept wasn't foreign to begin with, but also like I just didn't know that was like something that could be like pitied or looked down on. Like that never really occurred to me or came up. Like. It was only until I I realized that there was, like, some implied dysfunction from that did I really sort of care. Yeah. Because before that, I was just like, well, my my dad lives in Calgary. Because oh, okay. he, he did for most of my youth, up until I was 12. And then... Or no, no, sorry, uh, 10. Uh, and then he moved back... And I saw him a little more, um, not terribly often, but this, that was the only change. It was like, okay, well, my dad lives here now. Yeah. Um, you know, he's over there. I see him once a month or something because he lived with my grandparents and I had a, a strong relationship with my grandparents. And yeah, it wasn't until I was a teenager that I was like, oh, this is not normal, and I, <laughs> and I, and I also, it, like, such as being a teenager, like, you just sort of, I didn't, I, I started, it was only when I was a teenager did I start to actually, like, recognize that it wasn't normal, and also, like, take advantage of that, okay. in a way, I don't know if that ever was something you did, but, like, I got to, it was like, I, 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 how do I put it? It's like, oh, well, you know, I I have a chip on my shoulder because my dad wasn't around. Oh, so it wasn't so like I, taking advantage of him. 
No, no, no. It okay. was it was more just like the this sort of like social credit it afforded me. Okay. Of being like Like you were vocal about that? No, but like if it ever came up, I was just like I got to be I felt justified in like a scapegoat for crappy behavior? I can't imagine that. Well, not really crappy behavior, but just like I allowed that, like, when it came up to be a part of my identity to suggest this, this suggest this resilience, this edge, this okay, whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I, I, you know, well, my dad wasn't really around, so, you know, like, one of those things. And it's yeah. just like, you know, I kind of cringe looking back on it. Because I now have kind of come full circle and I'm just like, why does that matter? Yeah. Why did I care? Like... I did have father figures. Like, I'm very close with my grandparents on yeah. both sides. Um, if I ever needed a male figure in my life that was just older and had something to share or, like, offer some guidance, I had that. Yeah. And I think it was ever... It was it was silly. I realize now it was it was silly to ever attach that much importance or even that much resentment on not having a dad in my life. Uh, I mean, one could argue it's just like, well, you, you know, you feel like they, you know, uh, don't, don't care for you or they, you know, that they, they have this parental obligation. They made you, they should yeah. be there for you. They should, you know, they're your father. But like that, I was like, what, who cares? It's just in the same way that I was just like he tried to like any time uh, we had something to do with each other in high school, it was to discipline me, and because he felt like my mom let me get away with too much, and like the very few times that I did something, even even times that I didn't, but the school called my house saying that I hadn't been there for first and second period, and I was. Mm. It was just a. It was, uh, is they they just they just screwed up. It was just yeah. an attendance error, and he didn't believe me. He was like, "Well, your mom got a call from the school." And I was like, "Well, I was there." He was like, "Well, they, like he wouldn't give me the benefit of a doubt." Mm. First of all, which really pissed me off. Yeah. And without having any reason to believe that was in your character or your habit to be sure. There. And and which I guess was a, again a testament to, you know, how little we had to do with one another. But yeah. he. Uh, as he drove me home, because I was at martial arts, he drove me home, and I just didn't know what to say. I was like, I don't know how to, I I don't know how to convince him if he's not gonna even entertain the thought that yeah. I didn't skip school. So, and he even said he was like, you know, if it was one class, I get it. But there's two and two in a row, and two in the morning. And I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. I but whatever. And then my mom was upset, and then so like he kind of had. Well, I shouldn't say kind of, but he did. He had the audacity to be like, oh, you should go to your room. And I was, I was pretty pissed off anyway, so I yeah. went. But I was just like, you you didn't earn the right to do that. Yeah. You know, it's it's like when you're, uh, your rant, respect your elders. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't have to listen yeah. to someone, and it doesn't have to be my dad. It's, uh, it can be anyone. If they, they didn't earn the right... To, to do that, yeah. To to say that, like my my grandparents, sure, yeah. Because I had something to do with them, and I had I I built that relationship. And it wasn't and, even just about respecting them; it was about the fact that there was enough involvement, where like there there was enough involvement. Period in every aspect that you sure. knew that they actually cared about you, and that that they knew you. Yeah, I knew that, where that like, was coming from. Then. Yeah, and it wasn't just an authoritative like place it was just like yeah yeah right and um i guess one could say that like even if you know even if my dad and i like if i had grown up with him but like he still had that authoritative nature should i you know still inherently re respect him or respect that attitude anyway you know probably not yeah. but there was just more insult to injury in this implication that just like i'm your father yeah you know, that that should be enough. Yeah. And in, in, in that moment, in his mind, that was enough. It was yeah. just like, I'm your father, and you have to listen to me, despite having, like, a 
total number of hours face to face being something like like you know 110 yeah so so you mentioned that he was in Calgary for a bit yeah and then he moved here when because this was in high school you were talking about this incident yeah he moved here when I was about 10 and then so during that period of time 10 until present right uh yeah so when he was when you were 10 he moved from Calgary to Saskatoon and he's been here since then that's right but you mentioned like not having much face time with him so even though he was here how often did you see him well unless he was well because it was so ingrained in my my life and my schedule to just see my grandparents that being his parents um every other weekend almost as like well when I was born like he was already with someone else and my mom was already with someone else and so they arranged and because they were teenagers like they still both lived at home so the arrangement was that I you know much like parents that aren't together you know they divide the custody I mean I think my mom had sole custody but like you know, the visitation, whatever. Gracious enough to share that. Well, uh, yeah, however it worked, yeah. So I, I would see my dad, my dad, because he lived with my grandparents, um, like every other weekend. And I just did that until he moved to Calgary, not long after that, but I just continued to go to my grandparents. Yeah. Because I had, had that relationship with them. And they had it with me, and they wanted to continue it. So I just continued to see them like for for years, yeah. all throughout the time I was uh, I was young, uh, and then when he moved back, he moved back in with them for a short time, and then uh, got on his feet and got his own place. But again, it just didn't like. It didn't really I feel like occur to anyone to be like, oh well now that your dad's here, you know you visit him on the weekends now, like I just kept going to my grandparents. Yeah. Because that's just what I did. And once in a while, he would be like, hey, you want to come over? And I'd say, sure. And I'd go over. But that was super rare. Um, and then, you know, once I was in... I mean, the, and this was already towards the end of me seeing my grandparents anyway, like, going every other weekend. Because by then, like, by the time I was about 12 or 13, like, you know, I was, I was doing stuff with friends on the weekends. Yeah. Or I was doing stuff at home. Um, so those visits became less and less... Uh, or they, there was fewer opportunities. So, but that was kind of the biggest revelation for me was just like realizing that it doesn't that to me uh, that didn't it doesn't really matter. I like I, I it would like your experience is obviously different because a lot of your family, like your extended family, is just not here right yeah i don't have any extended family here like my mom and dad moved to canada um just the short version they moved here from chile in like 86 and i was born that year so yeah um we don't have any other family here like still right now the only family i have in canada is my mom and i guess my sister right um yeah so i didn't have any extended family around right and um i had a very opposite experience where i'm really close with a lot of extended family and they could lend those roles so I guess I didn't really feel that deficit but like well you said you didn't until high school and then I don't know it's interesting because you were saying like so that was something that I don't remember talking about before because mm -hmm. um, you, you were kind of saying like you didn't really notice a difference or didn't feel like it wasn't even not normal or whatever until around high school yeah but even then, at some point, you realize, like, oh, why does it matter? Because you had other figures there. Sure. I think for me, I knew it wasn't the average experience for for at least my context in Lethbridge and the, the elementary school I went to. Mm -hmm. I, like, was very clear that that was not the experience that most other kids were having. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I don't know, and I think that... I was pretty independent from an early age, and I know we've talked about being, like, latchkey kids and stuff before, um, and it's, like, when I was eight, I was, like, go to school by yourself, come home by yourself, yeah. whatever, right? Um, but, again, because I didn't have extended family or a lot of, like, close friends or anywhere else, like, it was just, like, 
just me and my mom. Like, it yeah, was just kind yeah. of really obvious from that time that I was like, this is not the experience that I should be having or that a lot of people do or what would be preferable to have. Yeah. Um, so I kind of knew that from a really young age and I, I was pretty aware of what I was missing out on as mm-hmm. it was happening and unfolding. Okay. Um, I remember mm-hmm. when I, in like high school and I needed to start shaving Mm. like that yeah, was for yeah. some reason that was like this this thing I can always point to is like yeah w- what do I do like, sure yeah, uh, yeah. And, and that's like that's a, I think that's like a that that's probably like like before YouTube that's probably the one yeah. for well, everyone yeah, yeah. and, and like for I had every... a stepdad for like that was there too like my mom got remarried a second time when I was well that was when we moved from Lethbridge to Outlook right. in 97 but he was uh, garbage to mm-hmm. be mild and he really only did any... He only communicated with me, with me if it was uh, disciplinary. Right. So he had, like... There was no connection there at all. Yeah. And he didn't teach me anything in any context ever. Except so, for how here. crappy he was. Yeah. So... Yeah, but I, I, I kind of knew what I was missing very much in the present all the time. Um, and, like... Yeah, I don't know. It was just... It, it's this weird thing, too, of, like... I would never expect... Like, I wouldn't expect this of anyone. I don't think that that it's necessarily useful for parents to stay t- together for yeah, the kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've never resented that. Being like, you should have stayed even though it wasn't working. Yeah, right. But there was no connection or there wasn't a lot of effort made in the distance. Because I think yeah. some people can still have a very close relationship or, like, put the effort in or, like... Sure. I don't know. Like, he ended up moving to Canada and then... But he ended up moving to Toronto, and if he really wanted to be... He could have moved to Saskatoon in 97. That would have been an hour away from where I was. Right. Right? Like, and that was, uh, you know, what is it, like 300,000 people or whatever here? Mm-hmm. Like, he could have found a job there. Yeah. What was he doing in Toronto? He was doing manual labor. He right. could have done he that here. He could have done that anywhere, yeah, yeah. yeah. It wasn't so, work that kept him there. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, at that age, I would have... I knew that, I, like, at that age, I would have loved to have, have spent more time with him then, and then I would have realized he's not really... He's just, he's not a horrible person. He's just sure. not a good dad, and he's just kind of a, I think he overcompensates for a lot of things he hasn't done, and I'm just not interested mm. in being around people like that, because he's a lot of talk. Sure, yeah. But, yeah. And, like, I, I feel kind of fortunate, because, like, I, I do get along with my dad now. Yeah. Like, I'm not really, I feel like we both sort of, I can't speak for him, but I feel like the, the relationship is basically, like, no, we don't, like, when we don't spend a lot of time together but the experience is fine uh you know well the most the most fun i have with my dad is if we like just go to a bar and have a few drinks and just like just kind of bs for a bit yeah um which it's not really yeah i don't know like i don't think either of us are are trying to like it's not like this trying to make up for lost time. It's not trying to It's not like a bonding compensate. exercise. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's, Yeah, it just sort of like once in a while it happens and like you know, I I like it could I don't know. It it could happen a little more. The only reason it, it like because it doesn't it's not because um there's any like resentment or hard feelings. It just it just kind of doesn't because we don't we still don't really have that foundation, so it's not like I'll go a month or two and be like, oh, I haven't talked to dad in a while. Like, or like, it doesn't just naturally come up where he'll hit me up and say, Hey, do you want to do something? Yeah. But you know, once in a while he does, or once in a while I will. And, um, like it's, it's usually fine. Uh, well it always is. I, I haven't had any like disagreement or like negative interactions with him since I was like 16. Um, it's, it's just, I don't know, just sort of a, just sort of in a, like a, almost like an acquaintanceship, I guess. You just sort of get together once in a while. But like when we wrote models, like those feel, like even though I was past that era, like when I was moving more into, um, like I guess a friendship with my dad, those feelings of resentment were still not too far from the surface. Yeah. And that was what I did draw on uh, for that. That's what I was going to... Yeah, you're going in the direction I was just about to go to. So. Yeah. Especially with resentment. Because I was going to ask, like... Um, just, yeah. I, I still have resentment. And I still don't know how to, like... 
I don't have a relationship. I don't. I don't want to work on one either because I feel it kind of useless at this point. Mm-hmm. I still very much feel like I don't have a father that's present. Like I mean, like the biology is uh, it, sure. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But like, does he didn't make much of an effort then? He made more of an effort then than he did than he does now. Mm-hmm. Um. And so, but there's still like. He's still like pop like with the Facebook thing. He's still yeah, like, yeah. "Hey, I'm here." Quick little flare in your life. Yeah, there, you know? and he'll say like weird every once in a while. Like he'll if I don't say anything for Father's Day, which I never do anymore. Every once in a mm. while, he used to just like, or if I don't say something for Happy Birthday, or like he, he what's the the word I'm trying to use? He would like make a comment about the fact that I didn't do that, oh, that's and I'm awkward. like, "Yeah, I know. Yeah. Like, why would I do?" <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know, my resentment is still there because I still just, like, I like again, in in the moment of growing up and being very aware of, like, my mom's working full-time at the hospital and I'm just, like, hanging out alone and then, like, my dad, she, like, I, I there was only one thing I really ever asked of him ever and it was to come to my graduation, mm-hmm. which I oh, completely... So, sorry, high, like, high, high school. school. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, like, I completely school, understand why, like, it may not be financially feasible to, like, I'm gonna fly from Toronto to this to Saskatoon yeah. and go to Outlook an hour away and like be there for that when you've got a kid and like I don't know what his finances were. Yeah. But it was like I get it, but at the same time, like that's the only thing I ever asked of him and he didn't Yeah, do it. yeah, and that's hard to swallow. And I don't know why I still wanted him there at that time, but I guess I did. Yeah. Um but but yeah, anyway, so my resentment's still there because nothing's changed. I also don't feel like I don't like it. I don't think about him very often at all. But I don't really know how to get over it. Because when he lived here for that period of time, I tried to like build a relationship, and that's when I really yeah. got to know this is a person that I don't like. So, why? It just... I don't, I don't know how to, like, get over... or like, I, don't know how to ha- I don't know how to have a healthy relationship with him because I don't want one at all. There's yeah. never been a connection to repair. So it'd be like starting one with someone you already know you don't like. Sure. So whereas you just started saying that when we wrote the song Models of Failure, that, that the resentment was still very, very close, or you would draw from it because you were just transitioning into kind of this relationship you have now? Sure. Yeah, and I, yeah, like, I still understand that, that resentment, and it still came from a real place. Like I, like, like I said, um, or have been saying, like, oh, you know, I realized it wasn't a big deal, or I either realized it wasn't a big deal, or I didn't notice, and then, there, but there was that period in between where I did notice and I did care. Um, but I sort of resolved those things eventually. Like, some of it was, um, uh, like, well, like the authoritarian thing, I, I think that comes up in models. Yeah. Uh, a heavy, a heavy labored hands. Heavy labored hands, a hard and hard. Yeah, because yeah. um, I really felt that, like that, that resentment of, of him trying to tell me what to do or to, like his only place in my life, which I felt he just like that was the only place he wanted to have, was was that uh, that authoritarian uh, voice that you know he didn't really even need to work to have. Yeah. Um, uh, like that was still pretty close, and sometimes still is. I, there, there are other few uh, experiences where, like, we butted heads, and I can pretty safely say it wasn't all me. Like, it wasn't just me being a hot-headed teenager, yeah. like, rebelling or whatever. I, I mean, I, I fought back, but it because I thought something was not fair or yeah. stupid. It wasn't me just trying to raise hell, um, and those just happened to be more prominent in that, like, when I was that age. But, uh, I mean, other things, too, like, I, you know, you still ask yourself those questions, like, or, or feel that it's unfair, like, uh, or, or you look at your circumstance and think, like, you know, this would be a lot easier if, we, if he was here, like, whether yeah. financially or whatever, emotionally. You know, it's, it's not fair. He's acting in his own interests, not mine. Like, there was still that. And I've resolved a lot of that with either saying that it's far enough ago that I don't care, or there was a larger social context going on that I couldn't appreciate because 
um, it was it it wasn't as simple as what uh, you know my dad getting my mom pregnant and then just being like peace. Yeah. Um, I was I was thinking before like. What works me the most is the middle ground. Because if that were the case, yeah, yeah. and I never had any sure, contact, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's easy to resolve. It is, yeah. Because right. I still don't have a resolution. But, yeah. you, so, I... Because you act... Didn't... Did you ever try to actively, like, block your dad on social media? Like, I, Sorry if you already said, but uh, I forget. I Yeah, there was a couple times because he kept popping up and trying to add me, and I was like, why are you doing this? So yeah, I blocked sure. the account. And he reached out to, like... He tried to add... It's happened more than once. So he would, like, add the girlfriend I had at the time. <laughs> and then he wouldn't be super... I mean, that's weird by itself. Yeah. But he wouldn't say anything super weird. He'd be like, oh, hi, I'm John's dad. Oh, okay. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, here? yeah. And he did that with Michelle. And uh, that's why I was like, fine. Okay. Fine, I'll add you. Because it was, it was more just you throwing your hands in the air at this, like, constant... Yeah, it was just... Yeah. That's always... I know we were talking a little before about chasing the dragon, which you know, we won't... You know, different think, context. Yeah, different but context, but... Um, well, not this one, but, you know, <laughs> um, the, it almost seems like that's sort of like for your dad, like it, he always needs to have you in his life in even just that little capacity. Yeah. Once he has it, that's good. Yeah. That's which it. Is... That's the end goal is to just have you there within arm's reach, even though he never does anything about it. Well, it's the thing. Like I understand like, oh, being on Facebook you can see what I, if I add pictures, if I, whatever, you can yeah. see stuff. He never likes anything or really comments. Again, unless it was like a snide remark, because in the past, oh, yeah. I yeah. had like, oh yeah, I have this picture I really like. It was in Jasper. Uh, I was with Michelle. She took the picture. I was at lunch. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. and I was, I was giving the camera the finger, yeah. but I liked my hair. I liked my smile. And I had it as a profile picture. And then he doesn't say anything for however long. And then he just says like, well, I thought you wanted to be a teacher. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not a very professional. Very professional. I was yeah. like, cool. Thanks, Thanks for, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> so just but, reply with that picture again. Just zoomed in. Yeah. On the... So half the time he never say anything. That's what it was. Like he would never say anything, and then he would make some yeah, weird yeah. little comment that would be like criticizing me. And like, and then that was the same thing. I was like, who are you? Yeah. To say right. like you don't know me, the context. You don't have the yeah. same sense of humor. Yeah. Like I'm. I don't think it's that rude. Obviously, you do, but I'm like, is a cute picture of me. I just have him to give yeah. him the finger in a lighthearted way. Yeah, I was doing that all today. I flipped off every animal in the house. <laughs> Five animals. I had every pictures. photo of you in your home. Yeah, <laughs> of yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's just a fun thing. But um, but like I was saying, I don't have. I still don't have a resolution. Okay. I'm curious as to like, I mean, for me and my, and my yep. dad. Because I still feel like the fatherlessness thing is there. I still don't feel like I have a father. You mm -hmm. just like, yeah, I've got a dad. He, sure, did it. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like that's how that's how pregnancy works, kids. Yeah, that's how babies are made. Yeah, the rope sometimes. The rope. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. So I still feel like I fit under this fatherlessness label hmm. because I do not have that connection. And that's also, even if I had, like, which I didn't really have, like, I've had, like, if I think, and I just talked about this in another video about, like, Mr. Lockhart, like, his teacher in my basketball Yeah, coach. yeah. He's, like, a positive male figure, but he wasn't really a father figure. Yeah, yeah, I feel like that's an important distinction, because, but, because, um, yeah, a, a male figure versus a father figure. Yeah. But then, uh, I, because so, I've thought about that as well, and then I, I, I felt like, and then you start sort of, sort of asking yourself, what is a father figure? Yeah. What is that? Is it, is it important and uh, I already have my answer, but what do you think of the term father, like like a father figure, and is it important? Well, I was going to say, and, and this will go right into that, is that, like, some differences, too. You said you, there was no one in the house consistently when you were growing up, like, like that you would say, like, oh, yeah, we had, like, yeah. I had a stepdad or I had something else. No, I'm positive Whereas, anyway, but yeah. Yeah, well, and that's the thing I was going to get to, is that the, I had a stepdad when I was, like, 11 years old. Yeah. And he was there until I was 18. Yeah. And I still, I don't think of him as a father figure. Like technically, I think yeah, under yeah. the umbrella or the label of father figure, he was there as a father yeah. figure. Like yeah, he yeah. was there, but but there was no involvement. There was no connection unless it was disciplinary. It was always like, it, it was never positive. Yeah. So that's why I'm sorry like, with 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 Harvey. You're, you're, oh, I, oh, sorry. I was, I was I was curious about Norman. If well, I moved out before they even like met. Really. 
Yeah, they met, well, around that time. So my mom and I, so Harvey, which is my sister's father, my half-sister. Oh, right. Sorry. For some reason, yeah. I was thinking um, Norman was your sister's father. So no, you no, had no, to no. have been there sooner. Oh, okay. So, no, no, yeah, no. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, that whole thing happened. Like, my Never sister mind. was like five. We moved to Saskatoon when I was 18. Okay. And then my mom met Norman, and it was like okay. years later they... Oh, okay. Like, it, it took a while before they actually even dated or anything. Okay, I but, see. No, no, no. Norman's a good egg. Um, yeah, uh, I was just curious egg. about because I know it, it, you know it's kind of yeah. Norman was wasn't there in your youth. Um, but no, I, they I got guess I'm curious married, about like, about that. We don't have to really get into that. Well, it was like nineteen, I think, when they got married. Nineteen or twenty. Yeah, when like they it's got married. So it's kind of hard to view that as I guess a father figure in a. Sense. For my sister, he was definitely a father. Yeah, of course, because she, she was, was young. Like six, seven. I don't remember how old. Six. Yeah. Maybe when they got married. Yeah. So like, yeah, he was in, in a positive one. Like, like he he was he's like I said a good guy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't really I didn't really have anyone else around that was you know father figure. Like my stepdad wasn't a positive. Like I guess he would be a father figure. He would be you know the he was the the stand in. Like not just legally, but I mean, he. I lived with him. He was there. Like, yeah. We all lived together as a family unit. Yeah. But he didn't do a lot of the things a father would have done with his own kid anyway. Right. We didn't have a bond. We didn't have a connection. It was always crappy. Yeah. Uh, pretty much from day one. So. So, so what do you think are? Uh, I, I I hate to be asking these questions like just now because I do have to get going. Yeah. But, um, so what to you is like those things that are expected of a father is it you know traditionally like the man shit like you shave or like is, would you have been content with like um just someone who can kind of like level with you on you know with you know, whatever girls or like just help you grow in certain ways because like when i think of like a, a father figure and when someone assumes or knows that I don't have a, or like didn't have that consistent presence, they assume that I'm, uh, or I get the impression that you're just not as likely to be masculine or yeah. manly. Like, because it, you know, oh, he wasn't there to show you how to, you know, fix a car or, yeah. you know, sh like that traditional man stuff. But even, but then again, too, like based on who you are as a person, and that's probably hard to know, but like, say you did have a, someone like that do you think you would have responded to that like do you think that would have do you think even if it was like stuff that was the, just that traditional man stuff that probably wouldn't have meshed with your interest in art w like would that would having a father fi a traditional father figure even in a sort of traditional way made a difference I think having him specifically there would have made a difference. I mean, no matter what, it would have made a difference. Um, right. But I sure. mean, like... Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a hard question to answer, I guess. Uh, what I'm thinking, or if I can just sort of rephrase it, like, yeah. would it... Uh, having a traditional father figure versus just, like, a positive male role model in your life... Um, I feel like... And maybe I'm taking this for granted because I had something to do with, like... Uh, what? Like, male role models... I never really thought of my grandfathers as father figures, though. Yeah. Even though they taught me a lot, and in in very many ways. Yeah. But thanks, Julian. Um. Puppers come save the day. Yeah. Oh, there's no room for you, Bo. Whoa, there's room here. Come here, Bo. You never thought of your grandfather <laughs> worker. <laughs> Um, I know, it just barely gets up. Um, so you ever thought of your grandfather's as, as father figure? Yeah, like, and, not, still positive and, and not in a bad way. Yeah, just I the the term father figure was weird to me because I was like, well, what do I, you know? Or almost interchangeable because I was like, I I learned all that stuff elsewhere. Yeah. So did did they have to have the same address as me? Did they have to sleep across the hall from me? Not really, for me. Yeah, I think I mean my answer is I don't know how to. Yeah, I, I yeah, I think that part of what I think I missed out on is stuff that's tied to traditional gender roles mm -hmm. because that's just part of what I missed out on because my father is a very like traditional masculine man with a lot of 
that stuff, whether it's mm -hmm. like mechanical things, like not a genius with mechanical stuff, but right. uh, you know, things like, I don't know. They're, one of the things that I attribute that I think would have been, it, it's weird to say, because I feel like I've accomplished so much more than he has in every area, but I mean, discipline. I, I don't have the discipline that I want, mm. and, I, and I think that he could have, if he was there, I think liked I, it or not, maybe contributed to that. Yeah, I think I would have been a much more disciplined person, like yeah. with self discipline, because sure. I struggle with that a lot. Um, but I mean, the other things too. I'm like, oh, well, maybe I would know how to fix my bike, pro or I would be more attuned to doing some mechanical yeah. things that that scare me to do because I'm scared of screwing them up. Yeah. Um, and and whatever. So like, maybe that would have helped. Uh, but I think too, I'm like, it's just a dynamic of maybe having two parents in the house too that would be different. Like. That you can't talk to one, there's another one you can talk to. Yeah, sure. Hopefully they're different people enough that yeah. you're just more well-rounded, too. So even yeah, if they're yeah, a same-sex couple... That's a good point, yeah. Or even if even if they just both... What if I had a dad who was just, like, a super, like, nerdy... like Or even really effeminate or whatever, like, which I say about myself a lot of the time. Yeah. But, like, if he didn't have those traditional male gender role stereotypes attributed to him, it would still be another person. It would still be somebody else um that was supposed to be in that parental role and again that just changes the whole family dynamic like yeah, everyone yeah. there's so many different types right but i mean like yeah. not having i mean the other thing is that we've been socialized to like have that expectation i think now the other generations don't have that same expectation especially with divorce yeah, rates yeah, and everything yeah 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 true but like i said i was very self-aware that my peers had a very different experience than I did. Yeah. And who knows what's going on in their house. But I mean, just from that surface level, like, yeah. oh, you have a mom and a dad. Yeah. Look at you. Right. And, and siblings and uh, extended family and all that stuff, right? Right. Whereas I didn't have, like, any of that uh, at all. And so, I don't know. I just think that there are positives that I, that I can go back to and I think I would have gained from having him there obviously not if they were fighting all that crap all the time yeah of course so i, I like i said that's never been a thing where i'm like yeah you should have stayed even if it sucked for you yeah um because i felt that way too i was like yeah it wasn't fair they it, not to interrupt but like i i had that same thought at one point because my mom said um and this really stuck me and at the time struck me as very selfish on on either side but she said well when your dad found out that i was pregnant with you he said he would stay but i said uh no no not if you don't uh if that's not, the if, not if you don't love me if that's the only if, yeah. you know not not all, that that can't be the only reason yeah. so i was like well that's not fair what about me yeah uh, it just at the time struck me as so so selfish because like just not even she didn't even like mince words she just or, yeah. or entertain the possibility that of, of how that sounded to me and i was like well yeah well what about me like don't do you don't you think I would have liked having a dad like you know that was your that was your guys's mistake like yeah. you, you know uh, why am I you know why am I suffering yeah and that was another thing too like for a long time I usually drew back any time I had a problem with something yeah whether you know it usually stemmed back to something that was financial or um, you know the surrounding area or circumstance whatever. Uh, there was all the root was always me going. My parents didn't mean to have me, and now they're not together. Yeah. And that's that's why this sucks, because you know you, you know the you know the the Adam and Eve of problems. You're like, well, I'm having this problem because we can't afford to do this, and we can't afford to do this because my mom's working all the time because it's just her, yeah. and because my parents didn't stay together, and my dad didn't want to, or didn't, and or my mom didn't wouldn't let him, and. Whatever. So that was like a huge source of resentment. At that I came to understand in high school as well. That was another way that I um, absorbed that into my identity in like kind of a misguided way. Well, I was gonna and say, then got over it because I was like, oh, there's more, just whatever. There's more to it. I was gonna say that I I never really had any resentment towards my mom because of my dad being gone. Mm. Um, it's all just, like I said, it's not even just about the physical presence not being there, even though that I see that would have been helpful for me, but even when we were there and I was, for the summers, it wasn't like he was teaching me stuff or like making up for lost time in that way. Mm -hmm. It was all really surface superficial stuff. Yeah. But to wrap things up, the last thing I was going to ask you real quick is like, mm -hmm. now that, that you, you mentioned this transitional period around when we wrote Models of Failure. Yeah. And now you've mentioned like, yeah, we go have a beer sometimes, like we have fun. 
and you've mentioned being friends. So do you still feel like there's a fatherlessness there because it's you that bond wasn't created in that context? And then and then it's not building in that way now. So do you still feel like that, or do you feel like you that I now have a father? Yeah. Or did you ever have like a big sit down? I don't think you. I think we've talked before. Like it's not like he ever came and apologized. Well, he did you, actually. My did dad. He? Yeah. Well, it was kind of a oh. look how hairy he is. I just oh, yeah. covered. But it was um, you know I think he kind of did it the best he could. Like we were driving to pick up my brothers once in Calgary and that's a whole other thing that my family trained dynamics or whatever but he was going to that was something we were doing a little bit like a nice little tradition I guess when my brothers were still young enough to come visit my dad when they finally could like that's a whole other thing too but um, just during the drive he kind of just said albeit in a little bit of an awkward way like yeah, I know I wasn't really around for you, and uh, he, ba- you know, he basically said sorry, and that was like a big moment for me. Like I didn't say much. I, I yeah. just said, "Well, it's, you know, it's all right," or whatever. I forget really what I said. I think I was pretty surprised. Uh, well, surprised and also pretty, um, uh, I don't know, not restrained, but like reserved, I guess. Like, yeah. Because he, th- I've thought about that for so long. I thought about that moment. And then all of a sudden it was just sprung on me and I just, I didn't know how to react. So I didn't react in any way that I thought I would or scripted how I would. Yeah. But it stuck with me and I was like, okay, well, you know what? That's okay. And another thing about, uh, just going back to models as well, like that felt like I expressed what I needed to express. And I, that almost, that helped me kind of put it to rest too. Yeah. It was like, okay, I've got, I articulated those feelings that I felt for so long. Yeah. And finally put them down in a very satisfying way. Yeah. Because I love not only the, how the song is structured, but just, the, like, well, with the words. Because I finally, I'm not, uh, I'm not a poet. Like, I write, but I'm not, I've always struggled with lyrics. I've always struggled with poetry. I don't know how to structure words that way or in a satisfying way. And, uh... Obviously, it came a long ways because, because, because you worked on it. Like we worked on it together. Yeah. But it was, it was finally having a, a a satisfying expression of those feelings that helped me go. Okay, I'm not worried about it. And so going back to your question, do I still feel fatherless? I mean, at at the core of my identity, I guess I, I I would have to say yes. But it, uh, in a broader way, not not really. Um, but I don't really feel, yeah, it just, it doesn't, I, I feel I'm past it too much to really even tell. And, but but it, no matter yeah. what, it's not the dynamic that you would have had or would have liked when you recognized, oh, I, this is not the norm and what yeah. I would want. That's right. Okay. Yeah. That's where I'm at. Cool. Yeah. <laughs>